it has been one week exactly since I switched to diesel and I've not been driving it exclusively. I do still drive the Lightning, but for the most part, I have been driving it and um, I wanna go over some of the pros and cons. First off, yes, it has a horrible turning radius. <laughs> I kinda knew that going into it, um, 350 versus 450, but my biggest thing was I wanted these 17 inch tires and not the 19 and a half. Uh, so I bit the bullet and I went with this instead. Um, now, <laughs> looking back, I probably should have just did the 450 with a better turning radius and then got some aftermarket wheels and tires um, and just put the 19s up somewhere. But um, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a problem. Still a really good truck. Still has good power. Still love to drive it on a daily basis. Um, some things I have done. I did do the four scan stuff. Um, I was able to turn my signals to five blinks instead of three. Um, I was able to disable the seat belt reminder on all seats. Um, I'm sure there were some others. Oh, Bambi mode with the headlights and the fog lights. I've got it so the fog lights stay on instead of having to turn them on every time you turn the headlights on. You know, certain, certain little things like that. A few things that didn't work. Um, Matrix headlights did not work. I haven't removed that programming yet, um, but it didn't change anything. I'm just going to remove it just to roll it back to original. Um, and uh, the the 30 minute idle timer, so the truck will idle for 30 minutes and then it turns itself off. Um, I tried to permanently delete that with Forescan and it didn't work. Um, I did get the floor mats put in it since I last talked to you. So here are the, you know all weather floor mats instead. Uh, haven't really changed much about here. Um, I did get the key today for my hitch. So I need to go get that and put it on actually. I just remembered that. Um, but as of yet, I don't have a hitch on it. I still haven't turned this around. <laughs> um, one issue that I have learned about the truck. In 2023, Ford started making this hub lockable. It's always been lockable, but the passenger hub was fixed locked. So it always locked 100% of the time. Uh, now in 2024, they're doing the same thing, but they removed all the vacuum hoses that go over to the other wheel. So used to, you could just buy a lockable auto locking hub, replace the fixed hub with the new hub and plug in the hoses and it works like normal. Well, now the hoses aren't even there. <laughs> so I had to order a lockable hub and hoses. So there's what the hub looks like that locks and you can turn that, lock it or auto. On the other side, it's not turnable, not lockable. It is always locked. And there are some benefits. I wouldn't say there's any benefits to that actually. There are a lot of drawbacks. <laughs> to doing that versus having a auto locking hub. I did also get me an antenna that's about this high. I just haven't installed it yet. Um, so issues with the always locking hub, um, it's always going to spin the axle. It's always going to have moving parts here because it's locked. Even when you're not in four wheel drive, this one is wearing things out in here. Whereas when it's unlocked and not in four wheel drive, not auto locked, this should be a free spinning wheel and nothing back here should turn. Um, more moving parts means more wear and tear. So um, I've ordered all the parts. It's only about $200. So I don't really understand why they did that in the first place, but <laughs> I ordered the parts and I'm going to swap that hub out myself. And that way I won't have to worry about yeah. Anyway, uh, other than that, I have not even tested this camera yet. Um, I've been meaning to, and then I forget. So that's how far that goes. Uh, I haven't climbed in the back to turn the hitch around. I haven't done anything. Um, I've just been driving it. I've got about 450 miles on it now. Um, on a daily basis, it's not a good daily driver. It is a lot bigger, a lot wider. Um, harder to park, much harder to park. 
on a daily basis, I'm going to drive the Lightning more if I can. Um, but at the same time, it's a nice truck. It'll do everything I need it to do when I do get that camper. Um, I Usually when I buy something, I like it to be practical. It's something I can drive on a daily basis, but also handle the weight that I want it to handle. This truck fit that for a long time. <laughs> the only thing this truck can't do is fifth wheel. And so that's why I wanted to get this. But this is not a good daily practical driver. So I'm still probably going to daily practical drive the Lightning. Um, but, uh, you know, there's no reason I can't have two trucks. So anyway, I'm gonna go get that uh, key and try to put the hitch back on the truck. Well, this is a not so pleasant surprise. Surprise, surprise. Yep, I don't know what I was saying there. This is not a three inch, and this is. <laughs> and as you can see, it doesn't fit. So now my $400, $500 hitch does not fit the truck. Um, <laughs> that's annoying because two years ago that was a three inch hitch and now apparently it's not. So I wanted to take a second or possibly a minute and talk about um, the hitch sizes on this truck. So what I learned is that if you have, um, you know, the heavy duty trucks, um, it depends on your axle ratio. So usually all the heavy duty trucks get two and a half inch hitch, like seen in the video. Um, I assumed that all the dualies got a three inch. That's not the case. Um, it depends on your axle ratio. So if you take a 410 axle ratio or bigger, you get the three inch hitch. Otherwise, you get the two and a half. This time I did 355. That's why I got the smaller hitch. Um, not a big deal. I ordered the part. Anyway, I'm wondering if that also has something to do with the height of the truck. So I want to show you a couple of clips here. Um, the first one is my 2022 f-350 uh that was a 410 axle ratio and then the next one's going to be my new one from the same camera uh 355 axle ratio it seems to me that the rear end of the truck sits a lot higher on the older truck than it does the newer truck and now it's really got me thinking is this a thing or am i crazy so let's have a look now here's the best clip I can possibly get because this is me pulling in with the old truck, turning it around, backing it under the carport. But you get a good profile view of how the rear sits. And you know, it looks pretty jacked up in the rear. That's just the way it looks. And it looked that way from the day I bought it. Now I'm going to back the old one up in sort of the same position here. The new one I mean. The new one up. And I mean, I guess it does kind of look jacked, but it just doesn't seem as tall as the old truck. And I'll back it up here just a little closer to the Model Y so you can see it better. But I wanted to get this comparison of both angles so that we could see, you know, does it look shorter, smaller? I don't know, after doing this edit and looking at them side by side, um, it doesn't seem that much taller or anything compared to the new one. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just feel like um, when I stood next to this truck, and here's some up close clips of the old one, um, I felt like it sit taller. I felt like I was just barely at shoulder height was the top of the bed on the old one on the new one yeah it feels like it's the same height as my lightning so i don't know